Hi everyone, my name is Nora and I'm a bioinformatician here at Pluto. And in today's video, I'm going to demo our RNA-seq differential expression module and introduce some exciting updates. Um, and I'm, to do this, I'm going to use a data set pulled from a really well done nature paper on medulloblastoma that focuses on how sonic hedgehog induces DNA replication stress, which promotes cancer initiation. So the cell type that the authors were working with in this paper are granule cell progenitors. And the reason they focused on this cell type specifically is that it composes the largest neuronal population in the human brain and GCPs proliferate in response to sonic hedgehog. So GCPs are the cell of origin in sonic hedgehog medulloblastoma, and that is the most common subtype of medulloblastoma among pediatric cancer patients. And this SHH medulloblastoma is most commonly caused by sonic hedgehog pathway mutations. So the authors wanted to answer this question of how does sonic hedgehog ultimately lead to increased DNA damage? And to do that, they kind of worked backwards. So one of the characteristics of um, SHH-related medulloblastoma is higher DNA replication rates. So the authors hypothesized that sonic hedgehog induced higher expression of nucleotide metabolism genes, which led to an increased availability of DNTPs, which we know to be the fundamental building blocks of DNA. And that increased availability of DNTPs led to a higher fork speed, which is essentially just higher DNA replication. And that higher DNA replication speed resulted in lower fidelity and greater DNA damage. So at the end of the video, we're going to return back to this hypothesis and discuss whether or not the authors you know, proved it to be true. But before that, I want to talk about how we can use the platform and how we can use differential expression to examine the first part of this hypothesis. Does sonic hedgehog result in an increase in expression of nucleotide metabolism genes? So what I did was I went over to the research tab and imported this public data set to my project. And if I scroll down, I can see I have all my sample metadata here, as well as the assay data, which is the raw counts output from an RNA-seq pipeline. So now that I have this metadata and assay data in my experiment, I'm ready to begin analysis. So I'll go over to the analysis tab and select grid. And you can see I've already done some interesting analyses here, but I'm going to add a new one and select differential expression and click create analysis. So now I can select the variable that I want to use for comparison in my differential expression. So here we're interested in condition and our control group we'll select first. And then the experimental group in this case are uh, granule cell progenitors or GCP cells exposed to 10 nanomolar of sonic hedgehog. Okay, now for the exciting product update. So now when you click under advanced settings, you have the ability to set the threshold criteria for feature inclusion. So in differential expression, you're obviously expecting that genes will be expressed differently across your conditions. So what Pluto does by default is it has this OR setting toggled, and that means that it looks at the genes in the experimental and the control group differently. So it starts with the experimental group genes, and it eliminates any genes that aren't observed in at least three reads in at least 20% of samples. So just to be very clear about that, that means that 20% of samples must contain that gene three times for it to be kept. Then it looks at the control group genes separately and it performs the same filtration. So 20% of control group genes or 20% of control group samples must contain a gene three times for it to be kept. The other thing you can do is toggle to this and condition, in which case it looks at the experimental and control group genes simultaneously. And a gene has to be observed at least three times in at least 20% of both experimental and control group samples to be kept. If you have any questions about how to configure these settings for your specific experiment, click this question mark and really helpful documentation will appear that walks you through a few different conditions. So I'll just go through one briefly. So let's say in your experimental group, you are anticipating that your treatment activates certain genes that would normally not be expressed at all in controls. So for this situation, you may want to require a minimum of three reads in at least 10% of samples in the control group to accommodate baseline, low or no expression without eliminating the gene entirely. And then in your experimental group, you may want to require a minimum of 10 reads at at least 90% of the samples to ensure that you are capturing those genes that are consistently induced by the treatment. For the sake of this experiment, I think the default setting works well to go with the OR condition. I am expecting to see those nucleotide metabolism genes in both the control and the 
sonic hedgehog experimental condition, um, but following my hypothesis, I expect to see them at different levels. So I'm going to, head, going to go ahead and click Run Analysis. Okay, so now our analysis has finished running, and I'm going to show you a few things you can do to this plot to make it a little bit easier to examine our question of interest. So I'll go over to Edit Plot Settings, and the first thing I'm going to do is just show the adjusted p-value threshold line. So it'll just create a line here to more easily visualize which genes are significantly increased or not. I'll also show the fold change line. And then I'm also going to adjust colors. So I can change the color of every single point on this plot. Um, first, I'm, or for this video, I'm just going to show how to change these significantly increased genes. So I'll change this color from red to pink. And I'll change the fill color as well as the border color. Okay. So now I've changed that color and it'll propagate when I save changes. And then the last thing and probably the most important thing I'm going to do is visualize my biomarkers. So before I ran this analysis, I created a list of biomarkers and that contained all of the nucleotide metabolism genes that the authors were interested in exploring. So I will select that list that I created. And then when I save changes, all of those genes are going to be displayed in a different color and they'll be labeled appropriately. So it just makes it really easy to see these pink genes are all the genes that were significantly increased in the sonic hedgehog condition. And all of the labeled genes are those that belong to the nucleotide metabolism list that the authors created. So I'll close out of this. And I also created just a few other plots that help me kind of answer the same question. So for example, I did a gene set enrichment analysis on the Wikipathways pyrimidine metabolism gene set. And then I also did a simple summary plot looking at the exact CPM normalized counts of the nucleotide metabolism genes in the sonic hedgehog condition relative to the control condition, as well as the IGF-1 condition. IGF-1 is another growth factor that induces proliferation of GCPs. So now we can go back to our notebook and you know, consider this question again about does sonic hedgehog induce expression of nucleotide metabolism genes, which then increases the prevalence of DNTPs, which then increases fork speed, and that results in DNA damage. And what the authors ultimately found was that, yes, sonic hedgehog increases the expression of nucleotide metabolism genes, and that does lead to an increase in the presence of DNTPs. However, they found that DNTPs did not lead to an increase in fork speed. It actually led to an increase in origin firing, which is the creation of origins of replication across a genomic sequence. And this increase in origin firing led to an increase in DNA damage. If you can imagine, origin firing needs to be a somewhat you know, coordinated process across all of the origins of replication so that they all kind of um, meld together. And when that's discoordinated and you have too much origin firing, it can lead to DNA damage during replication. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you again in the next one.